Coming to the dynamic programming based approach, uh, well, the algorithm in that uh, for that solution is known as the held carp algorithm. Uh, we'll come to the uh, functioning of this algorithm later on, but we can take a look at this example uh, which we can solve on the basis of dynamic program. So considering that we have a graph of four vertices, A, B, C, D, where the uh, weight is given between each of the vertices over here, and we also have an adjacency matrix on the right hand side. And we know that since this is a graph K4, we have three non-edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits possible in this graph. And this is just some calculation in order to know that what the minimum solution is. So we basically get that A, B, C, D, A, which is basically uh, this butterfly over here, A, B, C, D, A. This represents a tour of minimum cost. And now we are going to formulate the technique of the dynamic programming and try to obtain the same solution on the basis of it. So the basic principle here is that we have to construct a search space starting from null and we have to make our way gradually across sets of increasing cities. So we can start with either A, B, C or D or uh, once we start at a tour of length 1, we can then gradually go to a tour of length 2 representing A, B, A, C, A, D and so on and so forth and then we can go to a tour of length 3 and then finally we can go to a tour of length 4. So in the first step we can consider the case of the search space for a tour of length 1 in which we go from null to one city. These are the variables which we consider so we have a choice of starting with vertex A, B, C or D. And if you look at the adjacency matrices for these uh, positions, so uh, from null or to the starting point, we really have the distance as zero. So this is going to be the starting point of the dynamic programming based approach. Now, gradually, when we proceed to the second tour of uh, length two, in which the search space is expanded a little bit, uh, to consider the uh, second what is we can notice that some additional uh, possibilities are now available so for example if we have the case of a we can look at the uh, possibilities of a b a c a d if we take the case of b then in that case we have the possibility of b c and b d and the last one is the uh, c d possibility and these distances are all retrieved from the adjacency matrix which is constructed. So for example, if the, we take the case of AC, we can represent this point over here as the retrieval of that uh, information. So please note that we have a kind of a variable involved as the last city which has been visited. And in that case, we are considering that the last city is A and from A we are moving to C. In fact, the op opposite is also possible in the sense that we can say that we started with C and then we move from C to A. But it's no longer needed to construct that, uh, to include that calculation in the search space because as far as the graph is concerned, it doesn't make a difference whether you go from C to A or from A to C. So with two cities, we can now proceed for, further to the search space of three cities. Uh, in this case, we have a little bit more calculations at hand uh, so we can try to zoom in a little bit and see these calculations in detail so in the search space i is equal to 3 we can notice that uh, more choices of cities are introduced taking the case of a b c we can have some possibilities over here so a b c basically represents uh, that we, st we, we we could start the, the case of uh, maybe uh, the last uh, city as A and if we are going to choose the last city as A we can have the option of going from B to C and from C to A or alternatively we can look at the possibility of going from uh, C to B 
and then from B to A and both of these are actually reflected over here okay so we have the possibility of going from BC to A and from CB to A but we have to choose one of these values and that value has to be the minimum and it will be representing the last representation over here likewise we take the case of B so in the case of B we have the option of moving from AC to B and CA to B we can take the case of the last visited vertex as C and then in that case we have the possibility of going from AB to C and BA to C and in the same manner we can construct the space for all of the remaining uh, vertices over here okay so this needs a little bit practice in order to master but it's not it's not very difficult okay so you can you can have a look at it by pausing the video and now we can introduce the associated calculations so uh, let us move a little bit down and we can we can actually look at these calculations over here so we simply go to the adjacency matrix and retrieve the previous calculations uh, which have been performed and we find out the cost of the uh, movement from B to C and we get the cost from of the movement from C to A and we can we can place that over here as 15 plus 21 so it will help if you have the uh, associated adjacency matrix uh, uh, in front of you so so we can have a look at it once again BC over here uh, is actually um, okay so BC over here is actually 15 so the movement from B to C reflected over here is B to C and the movement from C to A uh, is 21 over here and it is reflected over here likewise in similar manner we can uh, retrieve the value of the different distances and we can substitute all of those uh, position wise information over here and once we make this calculation we can come back to the zoomed in version and notice what is happening so taking into account the very first case we notice that the 15 plus 10 is giving you a value of 25 this is much smaller than the uh, uh, the option over here so as a result the you can say the minimum value which we can take home from this is the option of CBA likewise uh, for all of the different possibilities of movements we can see that uh, some more computations have shown us which one is the minimum energy or minimum cost uh, of the uh, three length city tour from this point we can then move forward and uh, consider the construction of the uh, tour of length four so taking into account the tour of length 4 we only have one possible choice a b c d and again uh, we have the same mechanism so we can basically say that we have the option of going from b c and d and remember that okay there is there is one possible answer from this okay although we can have the movement from cdb or dbc we only have to choose the minimum value which is computed uh, when we were uh, obtaining the value uh, when we were obtaining the tour of uh, length 3 so from here we can have the option of from from this subspace we can then move towards a and likewise we can take the case of BDC so it's again the same arrangement over here and then we can take the case of DCB so we have one one option to choose from here and that one option can be basically obtained by substituting the values so we already know in the previous case what the value of BCD is so coming over here we can see that BCD is actually the value 21 and it is the minimum movement which is taking place as a result of the uh, tour of length 3 over here so we can substitute this value 21 over here and the movement from d to a can be retrieved from the adjacency matrix over here so we can see that uh, d to a is actually the value 18 and we can see the substitution of value 18 over here in similar manner we can uh, retrieve all the values uh, of length 2 
uh, of length 3 in this case from the preceding calculations of 2 or of length 3 so all of these values which have been constructed uh, over here are going to be used in this locations over here and the uh, remaining values are going to be retrieved from the adjacency matrix highlighted in green over here and as a result we can then find out uh, what the minimum cost tour of length 4 is going to be and then we do have to take into account that this is not a valid circuit for the moment it is just a tour and it will be a valid circuit if we we consider that we started at the vertex t over here then it must end with d also and we have to bring in all these vertices over here at the end and that would imply that after these uh, calculations we have to perform one additional operation in order to be able to determine what would be the cost of the 31 plus the movement from AD and so on and so forth. So we can we can basically see that um, uh, when we reconstruct these values so uh, we can take the case of the uh, 31 cost over here and add the cost of movement from A to D as 18 and we we can we can see that uh, all these uh, calculations which have been conducted so far are going to represent the Hamiltonian line and when we perform these set of calculations what we have done is that we have been able to construct the uh, cost of the Hamiltonian circuit and amongst these we can see that there is some some uh, repeating pattern so if we take the case of these these 49 values is the same uh, minimum cost value which we have obtained from the non uh, edge disjoint Hamiltonian circuits and if we if we represent all these cases over here DCBA is actually this 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 mechanism over here DCB and uh, A and then the A is linked back together over here and I'm going to copy paste this because this is actually the same graph if we take the case of uh, C D A B we we can see that it all the movement is reflected over here also and we can also take the case over here A B C D A is actually the same graph as well minimum cost solution and as far as the uh, complexity of the algorithm is concerned uh, we take into account that since we are looking at increasing number of tours we have members of the power set contributing to the different uh, levels which we have over here so each of these members a b c a b t a c d b c d and here a b of uh, a c and so on and likewise a b c they are all belonging to the power set and we have the uh, n square over here taking into account that they are nested checks so when we are at um, uh, sub tour of uh, length 3 we are actually making checks from sub tour of length 2 if we are at sub tours of length 4 we are actually making checks from sub tour of length 3 so this is the worst case representation over here uh, of n square combinations so overall uh, it it is still a hard problem in the sense that it's uh, still exponential but it is much better uh, than the complete search then then the conventional complete search based approach uh, based upon the naive solutions and now the actual held carp algorithm can be constructed on the basis of these steps so basically what we have over here is that since uh, every vertex is going to be visited once and then once we can assume that our starting uh, city is a so this is our starting point we can actually start from any place but this just it doesn't make a difference so this is our starting point and then we have to run this i uh, variable from b all the way to d and every time we have to make this uh, computation of a function so basically for a city of a uh, uh, for, for, for the starting point we can basically get something like b 
null is equal to C B A and if you look at C B A that is basically equal to 10 over here and then similar token we can get uh, C to null that is going to be equal to C A and C to A is basically equal to 21 likewise we can get D and null okay and that is going to be equal to C D A and that is equal to 18 so what it basically means is that we have started at A okay, and then we have we are looking at the possibility of going from A to B A to C and A to D and then we go and look at step number two where we increase the city subsets uh, gradually one at a time and basically the perf the, 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 this basically includes uh, cities of uh, uh, size 1 so we can take the case of s is equal to 1 as the very first case over here and this would imply that we are going to compute more of these function variables and then we can do f of uh, b and c what this basically implies is that in this case we have already moved from A to C and now we are looking at the possibility of going from C to B and this is going to be equivalent to the expression so what we are doing is basically you, we, we are looking at the new cost and the old cost which we already have and this would basically represent the minimum of C B C plus f of c null and we can look at this cost of c b c that is basically equal to 15 and this c null has been computed already before so this is the dynamic programming approach we are doing the 21 value over here and this is equal to 36 in similar in a similar manner we can construct the opposite of this and this would basically then imply that we have moved from a to b and then from b to c okay so in the in that sense we can get c b over here that is going to be equal to minimum of c c b or it, it, it's actually the same thing plus f of b and null so 15 plus 10 that is going to be giving us 25 over here we can zoom in a little bit and reconstruct the uh, other expressions uh, where did it go okay we can move a little bit down we can reconstruct the other expressions just on the basis of the previous value so in uh, continuing in this way we can get f of uh, b to d is equal to the minimum of C B D plus the cost of F uh, okay so in this case we have D and null I'll plug in the values in a moment so we have D to B is equal to minimum of C D B plus f uh, so we are looking at this expression b null okay two more to go we have f of c d is equal to the minimum uh, okay we just have one more term so this minimum is irrelevant over here but it's just to prove a point c c d plus f D null and the last one is F uh, D C is equal to minimum C D C plus F C null so we can retrieve all of these values So um, C B D is basically 17 uh, plus the D null is 18 so this would be equivalent to 35 
Likewise, CDB is uh, 17 and CP null over here is uh, actually 10. So this gives us 27. We take into account CDC. Uh, this is equal to 6. This is also going to be equal to 6. And we add the expression D null is equal to 18. And this is C null which is equal to 21 so this gives us 27 over here and 24 over here so we now can proceed to uh, sub towards s is equal to 2 okay so we can use these uh, values f references uh, let me try to reduce the size of this So this is going to be used uh, again. Uh, let's zoom in. So this time, since we are going to com construct the cities of length uh, uh, 2, we are basically referring to the same procedure. This time, we have limited options. So uh, we go to B, and we have to choose S is equal to 2. So we have the option of CD. And in order to be able to do this, we have to consider that this is equal to the minimum of either it's going to be the movement from C, B, C plus F of C, D or we can take the case of C, B, D plus the cost of F D C. So this can be considered as C B C is equal to the minimum of 15 plus 24 or we can say in this case 17 plus 27 so this term turns out to be 39, this sum turns out to be 44, so this is basically equal to 39. So what this basically means is that we have moved from A to some space CD and now we are coming back to B over here. And we don't really care over here because we are just looking at the minimum value. So so we are just choosing one movement over here and then later on this is going to be combined to two cities over here okay so that's the kind of movement which is taking place and in similar manner we can t take the case of f okay so we can we can construct the same thing over here this time what we are doing is that we are trying to go from a to uh, the space bd and we can consider whether it is moving to C or not. So we can construct this as C. We can take the case of B, D. And again, this is equal to the same expression. So we can take the case of the minimum of C, C, B plus F of B and D, comma, C, so this is C and D, so C, D plus F, D, B. And this can again be substituted into some values. So in this case, uh, uh, C, B is equal to 15. This uh, F, B, D is equivalent to 35. And this gives us a total of 50. And in this case, we have a total of 6 over here and db is equivalent to uh, 27 so so in this in this regard we can say that this is uh, 33 and the minimum cost of this is going to be 33 and the last one okay so we can come down over here we can take the case of f uh, d and bc so this again reflects the point that we have move from A to this uh, BC space and from here we are moving to D 
and this is going to be equivalent to minimum of so in this case we are taking C D B plus F of B C or we can take the case of D C plus the cost of okay D B and D C okay so we can now take the case of uh, F of uh, C and B so amongst this we can take the case of a uh, apologize so CDB is equivalent to uh, 17 this is equivalent to 36 so this totals to 55 and this is the case of 17 and DC 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 uh, DC let me zoom out DC is 6 okay so this should be actually okay I erase this part ah okay we have done a mistake this is uh, okay this is fine this is fine yes this is not a mistake so we take the case of 6 over here and CB on the other hand is coming out to be uh, 25 so this is basically 25 and 6 is going to be 31 and this is going to be 55 so in this case we can say that the total is equal to uh, my mouse just stopped working okay oh, we have space we have space so this is equal to 31 so for s is equal to 2 we can then proceed to the final step in which we take the case of s is equal to 3 so I'm going to uh, try to reduce this uh, over here So we finally take the case of uh, s is equal to 3 and that can simply be constructed by taking into account the consideration for and and this is going to be the final step so basically we we are going to say over here that from a we have moved to this space called uh, b c d irrespective of which order this is going to be and now we are going to come back to a again so we, we, we basically construct A and we take the case of B, uh, we take the case of B, C and D over here and basically that can be calculated by making this expression that we have to take into account the minimum of C, A, B plus the cost of moving to B from the space C D so this is the first term the second term is going to be C A C plus the cost of moving to the position C from the space B D and the last one is going to be C A D plus the cost of moving from the space B C to D so this is D and this is B to C so remember that we have already computed the minimum values uh, already so we can we can take the case of C to a B this is this is 10 a to C is 21 and a to D is 18 and when we come to the case of B and C D so the minimum cost over there is 39 so we can write 39 over here C and BD is actually 33 so we can put 33 over here and the cost of DBC is 31 over here so we can take the case over here now we can see that this totals to uh, 49 this also equal totals to 49 and the second term equals to 54 so the minimum cost over here is 49 Okay, so that basically tells us that this this f of 
A, B, C, D is equal to 49, which is the solution to our traveling salesman problem. So, um, from a coding perspective, all of these uh, these 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 contributions can be manipulated using simple uh, for loops, uh, where the, uh, the 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 iterations are going across certain uh, ranges of values. And remember that we, this this minus operation basically reflect that we have to do a subtraction of j from a particular subset. So uh, this is the representation of the held carb algorithm. 